Okay, and I will share now the screen. And we will do some Python today because I promised students to brush it up a little bit. So first of all, what I want to tell you something is that um, you need to absolutely, you need to uh, download Python uh, notebook, which is called Jupyter. You know, you can do Anaconda, Anaconda, okay? Uh, you spell like that, Anaconda. And Anaconda has many programs, not only Python, but it, it, it also, it is, it is automatically will have Python uh, Jupyter notebook. So to use it, it's uh, very, very simple. And uh, uh, you will have windows like that. And in the windows, you can write your codes. So the, fir the first code, and I, I promised to uh, start from the beginning, it is the so-called string. Because in Python, we have uh, data types, strings. We have uh, also uh, floats. It is, uh, we have uh, not integers. Then we have integers. And also we have, we have um, uh, besides that, we have Boolean. So it is like binary, true or false. But a string is, uh, in data science, is the equivalent to categorical values. Because categorical values can be the whole text. So string is, is very simple. So for example, to print the string, you have to put print, my name is Peter, for example, right? And you have to run it and your output will be my name is Peter. So it's very, very simple, okay? Yeah, my name is Peter. Now, uh, the string you can also write in terms of a function. So here is X is a categorical function. For example, Peter, I'm, a 20 year old and uh, for example, and uh, I live in Bui. Okay, uh, so this is function. You can bring it in terms of argument in print. And this is F is function. So you start with a, with a string because it's not integer and you also insert the function which is here. Okay, so let us run this. Yes, so my name is Peter and I'm 24 year old and I live in Bowie. Okay, okay. and now uh, we have uh, four types of different uh, data presentation. The first one, it is called, I will start with tuple. Tuple, tuple, it is, we put it in, in round brackets. So round bracket is also called parentheses. So for example, apple, banana, cherry, apple, cherry. This is tuple, okay? And this is a tuple, what it is. It is, we use it very often when you, don't, when you want to fix something. So this array, it is also array. It is fixed array. So you cannot, for example, add another array, which is in practical terms is good because for instance, you have this array, which you already verified and you cannot add here anything like noise or uh, some errors. It is it is fixed array. It is it's like concrete made of concrete. You cannot add anything to this. You cannot subtract anything. Whatever. Okay. So it is very rigid uh, construction. Okay. So let us see if I just print this uh, tuple. What I will have. I have to run. Yes, I have apple, banana, cherry, apple, cherry. Right, now, what do you think if I do now not tuple, but I do set, set? Okay, let it, to, to make it set, I have to put curly brackets because curly brackets means set. Okay, let me just do that. Okay, so this is set now. And print now set. Set. Or tube, I'm sorry, this is a set, so I have to change here to set. It doesn't matter how I call it, but it's not tuple set. All right, so I can just put here a string. Let's say uh, we can set 
set is okay set is and i put here set okay now what i will have if it is set you know that set uh, has unique unique elements so if it is correct that set here apple twice so it will eliminate this apple and also cherry is twice cherry cherry right it also eliminates cherry so we expect that instead of this tuple i will have apple banana and cherry because apple it is the uh, repetition of of the set set doesn't like it and cherry same thing let us run it Okay, so what it is? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I put uh, like this. Okay, and not here. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Okay, set is cherry, apple, banana. Cherry, apple, banana. And uh, that what the repetitions, it, it, it is included. So this is we call set but dictionary same thing dictionary it is you can, you can open a book in dictionary you cannot say that apple explanation and and uh, another apple explanation so dictionary also same thing you know so set a dictionary are in python uh, have different uh, are almost the same except some other things but we're not going to discuss them so dictionary also won't uh, uh, accept repetitions now basically we use a lots of lists list and list goes with square brackets square bracket it is list okay square bracket it is list i can just use this or i can put here okay so i can put here now square brackets okay i can put square brackets <clears throat> Okay, and I will have the whole thing now, the whole thing. All right, so I can put just a uh, list, it is list, it's not set. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Oops. Okay. Okay. So it is uh, Apple. So I will have, I will have uh, instead of said, I will put list now here. Okay. This is list. So I will just print a list. But list is what good. I can. Add it. I can work with this list. Anything I can do, I can multiply even this. Anything I can do with the list. Let me just run it. Yes, it is list. You see? Apple, banana, it, it has repetition, anything. It's very flexible list. And we use in a data science, we use a lot of lists, lists in numerical or categorical values. Okay? So, for example, I have one list, X, this one apple banana cherry apple cherry and another list i have kiwi and melon okay so let me just add this list to this list okay i use command x extend x dot extend this is a command to add one list to another one okay so let us see what we'll have here let us see Okay, so I have apple, banana, cherry, apple, cherry, plus kiwi and melon. You see that? So I can do that, but with a tulip, I cannot do that. Okay, for example, I have one tulip here, another tulip here. I use X extend, same thing what I did with the list. Let me just see what I will get. Oh, okay, I will have, a, I get a mistake. So tulip object has no attribute. 
it has not cannot be added. So this is mistake. So tulip cannot add this one to that one. See, it is already. And tulip we use when you have a result. So nobody can enter, nobody can put anything. It is very, very useful, tulips. But when you're working in programs, okay, you better use uh, the arrays uh, in terms of list because they are flexible. Okay, that is a golden rule in data science. Now, uh, I told you before that we have lots of uh, libraries, uh, which we didn't have these libraries. We didn't have, for example, uh, the years when I was, I was a student. We, we didn't have things like that. And we, we had to, to write the programs, to plot, and uh, it, 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 it took many, many, many days and weeks. And I, when I got my thesis, uh, I, I spent lots of lots of times plotting things because I had to write everything on in head. Here we have just take import mat plot leap, and I can do anything with this I want. You see, I can, for instance, plot. Uh, it's called uh, let scatter plot. I can put, put dots now. Okay, so for example, I can put now dots on the XY plane, on the XY plane, let me just see. Okay, so it is plot, it is PLT, it is, now it is command to import matplotlib and use matplotlib in this program. So we will put this import, this library as this one, because you don't need to put this long, long library. Yes, you can put SP or P PLT, whatever. So you just need to tell how you invoke this. And then it is plot scatter. Plot scatter, it is scattered plot. It is just dots. And I put color in red. Let me see if I get it. Okay, so I have this, this plot of these dots. I can, for example, put green G, and I will have green dots. Okay, I can put yellow, whatever. I can put black. Okay, it doesn't matter. But uh, this is then an idea. So with this just one sentence, I can plot anything I want. In my days when I was a student, uh, this program took me two pages or three pages of text writing. Here is very simple, you see? So this is an idea of using pro uh, programming languages with different libraries and Python is very good in that. Now, what about uh, I take my uh, data uh, that I send you to work with, okay? And uh, you remember this, uh, uh, it was this data. And uh, uh, I would like you to uh, work out on that. So these data are not sorted, so it is just randomly spread, 52, 57, 48, whatever. Let me see, see how it works. So I have to now remove this tag because it gives, that computer skips when you see this tag, it, it is skips this tag. All right, so then it is run, and I see this, our data that I send you to process. Okay, this is like that. Now you see this data not organized. This goes down, this goes down, this goes down. And in uh, many applications, statistical applications, uh, this program automatically uh, makes them in ascending or descending order. Because statistics, uh, uh, like uh, for example, when we talk about uh, quartiles, very important, when we talk about uh, other uh, algorithms, it requires, uh, let's say, for example, even to, to find the median. Median, uh, you have to also to, uh, to look at, uh, for applications in different applications like quartiles, you need to sort the data. So let us see how we can sort the data. So sort the data and descriptive statistics, okay? So you take your data, okay? Uh, and uh, you sort the data because here the 52, 57, 48 is not sorted. So you use command sorted, sorted X, and you will just have this data print in sorting data. So this is your output. 
48, 52, 57, 61, 64. It is very, very simple. I'm going to send you this program. So you will have it, uh, all these programs, and uh, you can uh, just uh, train a little bit at home. Now, what is about descriptive statistics? Descriptive statistics is very simple. It is involves to calculate mean, median, variance, standard deviation, and quartiles. It's only one thing. And today, I will also explain you how we can use quartiles to do uh, machine learning pre-processing. It is very important because, because um, I had also in my practice, I think I already told you, we had a, a person, he was very, very good, actually, specialist, and uh, he did uh, uh, machine learning without pre-processing, and he, he got absolutely inadequate results. So not to, to follow his steps, I will show you how we can use quartiles for pre-processing for machine learning, because you are going to use real data, so you need to know this. It's very important. If you don't know this, you cannot work in machine learning uh, uh, landscape. So for this, we have uh, the so-called statistics. It's a whole library. So this is library. It is uh, matplotlib. It is plotting library. But this is statistics library. So it's another row of books, let's say. OK, so statistics, it's a very, very rich library. And uh, sorted, of course, it's a very simple thing. You just take your data in terms of a list, because it is uh, square brackets, and put comments sorted, sorted. And then you print Y, OK? So let us see now how it works. So we just remove this one, print Y, and you have that one. 48, 52, 57, and so forth, as I told you before. And uh, now we can use statistics. We already use this pre-sorted, so sorted um, data. And we can use mean, but mean, it, it doesn't need even to sort the data because the mean, it is the same. Okay, but uh, it doesn't matter now. Okay, you, mean use stat. So statistics comment as stat. Okay, you can put here, not only necessary, as one student asked me, you can put it as ST, but you have to change here. Instead of stat, you put ST. Okay, but you did give a comment how you can use it in terms of stat. So now you have mean, very simple, mean equals stat, mean, print, mean. Okay. Then you have, uh, for example, to round it if you want. Mean value, same thing, it is stat median. Okay, and median is important because median you can find for data sorted. Yes, then it is variance. You remember I told you what is variance. Variance is a matter of dispersion uh, 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 along the uh, mean axis, and uh, uh, the standard deviation is a square root of variance. Very simple, and then you have quartiles. Okay, and then I will ask you questions. Now, because when you when we run it, okay, so if we run this thing, it gives you mean value, then I rounded it uh, to the second uh, digital digit after the decimal point, and then you have quartiles. So the first quartile is 57, it is Q1. Q1, it is the all uh, the numbers from the smallest to the Q1, which is 57. So we have three elements is in the uh, first quartile. So first quartile has three elements, all right? Percentage-wise, it is three divided by 11, because I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So this is the first quartile. What about second quartile? We have Q2, 72. 72 is here. So the second quartile will be, we have 61, 64, okay, and 72. Because 72, it will be, will be right here in between, yeah? So it, it is like, it belongs to this and belongs to that. So we have one, two, three, and uh, the third quartile will be 
76, 77, because 72, I just put it into the, to the first portion. And the final fourth quartile will be uh, 81, 85, 88, 81, 85, and 8. So the first quartile, 48, 52, 57. The last quartile, 81, 85, 88. And these numbers, numbers with 5, represents IQR. Very, very important. So in this, uh, we have only five numbers that represents IQR. It is between um, Q1 uh, uh, and Q3, okay? Now, that is very important. So this is what how quartiles are. Now, how we use quartiles? And this is quite important. This is quite important. So we use, uh, we use um, the, just a second. We use the so-called box plot. A box plot is very, very important because when you work with uh, uh, synthetic data, you don't have this uh, situation. But when you work with uh, uh, real data, all the real data we call is dirty. You never have, never have a, a, a ideal data set when you work with real data that has, for example, 100,000 entries. There is always some kind of problems. And problem number one, outliers. So, uh, and uh, the problem that what I told you about this young guy who came to us to work, he, he didn't care about outliers and he got a better result. So outliers should be eliminated. This is a golden rule. Outliers should be eliminated. Outliers should be so machine learning doesn't work with outliers it gives you bad result okay uh, as a matter of fact it is so so bad results that you cannot imagine because as i said machine learning goes primarily to large numbers Okay, and the large number it is just one. So machine learning will be working only with one uh, number and it will learn from this number because machine learning is something that you, that machine learning t uh, learns itself. So it will learn from the data as a big number. So it will neglect all other numbers. It is very, very bad. And please, uh, first step is one of the most important. You have to eliminate outliers if you want to work with machine learning, it's number one. Many people don't rem don't remember this or forgot this or didn't study this. They make crucial mistakes, okay, and they give bad results. So how uh, we can do it with outliers? Look how to uh, to look at them. So for example, you take uh, this one, you take our data that I send you, and you run it, and you have this. Uh, we call it this the box plot. So let us see. We said that the uh, there are three numbers from the smallest value to Q1. This is Q1, which is 58. And we have three, 48, 52, and 57. 57 is almost on the border, okay? And sometimes we have, when it is comes very, very close to the border. So this is our first quartile uh, from the smallest to Q1. This is Q1. This is Q1. Okay, Q1 is 52. Now, the second, uh, what we are interested, it is from Q1 to Q3. And this is, this is uh, the IQR in blue color. And this uh, horizontal line, it is a median. You remember median was 72. It is median. And we have five numbers. Let us see now. One, two, three, four, five. We have five numbers in IQR, and three numbers we have in uh, from uh, Q3 uh, to a large, uh, the largest number here, which is 88. So this is a box plot. Now, uh, uh, this looks very normal, very normal because 
uh, we have a criterion in data science that uh, outliers uh, should uh, uh, be uh, quite to give us a concern if uh, outliers located, let's say, uh, uh, 1.5 and higher uh, from uh, the uh, Q3. This is Q3. So if outlier one and a half is somewhere here, it can be outlier. Okay, so you have to be careful. But if outlier it is even higher, let's say 10 IQR, it is definitely you have to eliminate. What I can do now? So instead of 61, 61. So suppose somebody who made, <clears throat> let's say, some observations. Uh, let's say uh, he did observations in machine learning from, uh, uh, let's say, a detector that detects the speed of, uh, of a car. It is, uh, uh, let's say, the car went 48, then it went 52 miles an hour, or 57, 61, but some, it, it, the detector made, uh, it was faulty engineering, we call, it made 610. That's 64, 72, 76, 77, 81, 85, 88. So the car is on the highway already. But here is 6, 6 uh, 10. So what we do, we're going to run now this program. And what you see is disaster. Look at that. This is the outlier, what it gave us uh, the compared to, the, uh, to other data. So you can see right away that this is an outlier because it is, let's say, even two, what will take it, two IQRs, it gives you one, two. It is uh, at least a good 10 times as, as much, okay? So that is, it is a uh, thing. If you do not correct this data and put it in machine learning algorithm, what it will do? Machine learning algorithm will focus on this data. And if, for instance, some newcomer data coming, it will reject it because it, it learned this one. Machine learning always looks when it is data are, are large. Okay, you remember I told you that many algorithms work like that. Okay, so this is, you will get that all data re uh, rejected and machine learning will give you this dot as a final, uh, final result in terms of its pattern. So it won't look at this, but it will look only on that. So you have to be sure that outliers are eliminated. And uh, uh, next time I will uh, will discuss, uh, I'll show you a program how it eliminates uh, these outliers automatically. Then you have also uh, the so-called histogram. So histogram is, uh, is important uh, because uh, histogram shows you distribution of data. So for instance, we have here uh, our data and we'll put now the histogram. And usually histogram, it's, uh, it has, as I told you at that, uh, uh, before I told you that when you will kiss histogram, we have to give bins. Bins is uh, the, uh, when we split the X axis, we split in bins in this kind of boxes. Okay, let us see. For example, if I have the bin size, you have to give it. It is square root of the uh, number of elements. It is usually they do it like that. Let us just run it. Okay, that's what it is. So it is distribution. So it, it means that, for example, if you'd like to know what the probability that it will, uh, uh, for example, the case will fall within uh, this um, a range like from 48 to this, you have to divide this uh, area by the total area. Okay, this is a idea of histogram. Histograms work with areas. Okay, let us see now. We can put instead of uh, a uh, square root of x. It is usually people do that. We can put uh, bin size. We can put let's say five or ten. I don't care about it. Then what I will have. Okay, so this is a, a, a when we have a bin size equals 10. 
All right, so these histograms are so important. Uh, that is uh, unbelievable. And it is pushed a lot in uh, the uh, data science because uh, the, that is the idea behind of our data uh, presentation. Uh, for example, uh, if I now take it, for example, even 20 in size, so I will have here, it is uh, one uh, only uh, that has this value. Second, only one has this value. Uh, only one has this value and so forth, so on, so on. But this from let's say 76 to 77, because this from one to now from let's say 49 to 50, then 76, 77, it has two values. Let us check. So from 76 to 77 has two values, 76, 77, two numbers, okay? Two values between this bin. So this is a bin, this one, it has 76, 77. Nobody, nothing has the same thing, you know, let's say 48, it has, doesn't have 48, 49, therefore it is like that, only one, okay? And this is, of course, uh, the bins are together, uh, they split, and for them to uh, separate them, we can put here even 25. Okay. And uh, then you will have another uh, thing, and you can play with this as you want. And you can have different uh, histograms. But what I want to tell you, uh, because we are going to, to use these histograms today uh, in more detail, it is called also violin plot. So uh, remember, we have box plot in data science, we uh, have histograms, and we have, we have a viol violin plot. So uh, this one we use to remove outline, outliers. This one we use uh, for understanding. Uh, so this is the idea, of, uh, it is uh, so important. We use everywhere histograms, and I will show you where we are going to use it specifically for data collection. We use size histograms. And then we use violin plot, which is a combination. So this is violin plot. It's a combination of box plot and data distribution. So from this violin, we see that this really violin, it is not symmetric with, re with respect to, uh, to the, mm, uh, uh, let's say, uh, median of this, to the middle line of the, uh, this plot, which is violin plot. And it gives you idea that you see lots of data accumulated at the bottom. And this is, uh, uh, not exactly what we want in data science, because in data science, we want that data, that data spread towards the median. And uh, this is, I will tell you now why it is. Okay, so that's what you have to know. You have to know once more. We have to know, and I will send you this. We have to know what does mean string, how to plot the string or print it. You have to know four types of data in Python list, tuple, set, and dictionary. List, you can work with a list, no problem. You can change, you can multiply, you can divide, you can add, you can subtract. You cannot do this with tuple. Tuple, it is fixed. Okay, you cannot enter, let's say, one add one tuple to another. Set, you can you have to describe with a curly bracket, okay? And uh, the, the, uh, the set will remove uh, elements which are in repetition. Same thing is dictionary, okay? Now in plot Python, we have uh, the, uh, you have to import, it is library. It is matplotlib. And you can plot, for example, plot scatter plot with you can put different, different color, different uh, whatever. You can have dots 
in scatter plot. Okay, then you have, uh, let's say, uh, doesn't matter, you can put even million points here, dots here. And then you have to uh, sort data, it's very simple. And then you do descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics, it is mean, median, variance, standard, deviation, quartiles. Okay, uh, then you have box plot. Box plot, it is a tool to visualize outline, outliers. It's very, very important in machine learning. So if you go to work somewhere and you have a data, first you have to do, you have to use this program. It is only <laughs> four lines and you can see whether there are outliers or not. And if there are outliers, you have to eliminate them if you want to use machine learning. Now, except one algorithm, which I will tell you, it is, it is not, uh, uh, for, for this algorithm is very interesting, they don't care about outliers, but it's only one that I know in machine learning. Uh, I will show you. And then um, we have histogram with um, different, um, um, bean sizes, for example, the three will be will be this one, okay? And uh, uh, the idea of a histogram, I will uh, I will discuss it today. And also we have violin plot, which is um, um, violin plot. It is a combination of uh, the box plot, it shows you, for example, where it is, who can be outliers. Yeah? And also, it shows the dist data distribution. So it is, in this case, it's skewed to the bottom. You have not uh, so many big data here, large numbers, but you have large numbers here, but there are not so many of them. So it gives you this data distribution. This is called a violin plot. Violin plot we use in data science, even in modern data science, because uh, also I will explain you why. Okay, so what will happen now? I will just uh, here show you finally another one, another library, which is called NumPy. NumPy library, it is a mathematical library. And uh, it is, uh, for example, uh, can give you just a second. For example, uh, there is a difference. You take y, let's say, uh, equals sine x. Or y equals np. np. So, this one will be calculated using the mathematical library of Python sine x. Okay, so uh, what is the difference between this one and this one? In this one, we do not use the uh, this library. It will calculate you x. For example, if you want to calculate x, let's say from uh, zero to pi. And here is you calculate uh, uh, y, uh, let's say from uh, also from zero to pi, but use NP. So use library. And I told you in this case, in this case, in the, we will talk about it later. So in this case, it will uh, give you optimized calculation. So Python is not only does calculation, but it also optimizes calculation. This is very, very important. All right, so now we take uh, a break, 10 minutes, and then we go to work on applications uh, of uh, uh, data collection in uh, data science, how we collect the data. All right, so let's finish for uh, uh, before break, and we will talk uh, later on. So let me just, okay, so ten, 10 minutes break. Yes, Prof, thank you.